Good morning and happy Sabbath. Welcome to uh, Linwood. We're glad to have uh, the everyone here with us uh, this morning in the sanctuary as well as uh, all of you guys online. Um, as you may have guessed, uh, if you looked at the bulletin, I am definitely not Emily Schlittenhart. <laughs> um, that uh, changed last evening, so uh, it's a little bit of a, a uh, change here in the plans. Um, Emily had some things that uh, um, she had to take care of today, and there was no way that she could make it. So uh, we can definitely keep them in our prayers, but uh, thankful that uh, uh, Lorinda and Terry could be with us today. Thank you so much for uh, being willing to be used by the Lord, and, and uh, welcome uh, to Sabbath school here. So um, I just uh, wanted to ask if there was any prayer requests that you guys had. Um, I'm thankful for uh, a beautiful Sabbath day and that we made it uh, through another week um, and that we're here uh, for Sabbath. Maybe just a special blessing on our moms. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Absolutely. It's Mother's Day and uh, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers, uh, whether you're online mm. or here uh, in person. Yes. Um, very uh, awesome to, uh, to recognize the mothers uh, on this uh, Mother's mm -hmm. Day weekend, for sure. Yeah. No I doubt. had one, um, Jeannie Mackey, used to be here in um, Fern Duran. They uh -huh. moved to uh, Pennsylvania, and she was in the hospital uh, recently. I think she's still in the hospital, moved out of ICU, but mm. really, really sick with oh. the renal failure. Oh, my. And uh, we got a call yesterday that she's doing much better. Oh. So oh. praises and more prayers are needed. For sure, yeah. for sure. And I know that uh, I don't have the bulletin list with me, but there's several that are still on the uh, our list of prayer requests okay. that we can certainly uh, uh, remember those as well, um, and uh, any any others that we didn't cover for sure. Yeah. Well, why don't we start with a word of prayer, and uh, we'll get into the lesson. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you love us. We thank you that you care for us, and that um, you know each uh, prayer request. We ask that you would be with uh, Jeannie Mackey. We thank you that she is doing a little mm. bit better, and we give you the honor and the glory for that. And we just ask that you would um, draw near to her and uh, her family, that they may have your peace. There's also many uh, prayer requests on our church list uh, that is published in the bulletin. And, and uh, Lord, please draw near to each one of those. Give them your spirit, your blessing, your peace, um, and your healing if it would be your will. We thank you so much for this beautiful Sabbath day. We thank you that uh, each one could be here with us as well as those who are online. We just thank you so much that you uh, died on the cross to give us the chance to live with you in a perfect world where we don't have um, all of these heartaches and pain. And we just ask that we would accept that blessing in your name. Amen. Amen. All right. So um, we have the Abraham's seed is the title of the lesson. And, you know, um, we're going to try and, and learn a little bit about that this week and um, figure out what that means. Um, so if you would start off, Lorinda, by reading for us Deuteronomy 7, uh, 6 through 8, please. Yes. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. The Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you, because you were more in number than any other people, for ye were the fewest of all people. But because the Lord loved you, and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, 
Hath the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt? Mm. Oh, I love that. I, I love, love that, that verse um, mm -hmm. because it's not because they were a perfect people. It's not because mm -hmm. they were the most or anything like that. What was it because? Because he loved them. And he'd made a promise to Abraham. That's right. And, and as father, well grandfather. As mm -hmm. <laughs> that is correct. And, you know, if we, if we look to Matthew 5, too, Matthew 5 talks about how he, he loves the poor in spirit, those who mourn, the meek, the persecuted. And, you know, that community was not the high-ranking people. That they fall correct. into that category. And he he extends his his arms and his embrace to those that are are meek and lowly. Well, they were a slave community, actually. Yeah, um, they were. And so that's really down at the bottom of the ladder yeah. for probably learning, knowledge, everything. Mm -hmm. Correct. They had nothing to offer God, really, did they? <laughs> yeah, and nope. you know, I also like Titus 3, 5, but not by the works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, yes. mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's where it all comes from. It, it gives us hope because um, we as broken humans um, have, have the ability to trust him and we can have that eternal life as well. We can, we can be Abram's seed, um, not because we are of his lineage mm -hmm. um, by family, but because of Jesus. But we're, we're grafted in Amen. because of that. Jesus, and it's such yeah. a hope. I just, I was so blessed by this study because it's such a hope because it's so counter to what the world teaches. The world so teaches um, to, to try to make these achievements in yes. the world, the notoriety, and yet God, what does he say about those? Those people who are high ranking are gonna be low in the kingdom of heaven and those who are low in the earth are gonna be high in the kingdom of heaven. And it gives hope to each of us that no matter the depths of lowness that each of us have, have found ourselves in our, in our lives, God says, you know, hey, look, I am here to bring you up. Follow me, follow me obey my commandments, abide in me, I will abide in you, and I will lift you up. And it's yes. such a, just a tremendous promise, I think, to all of us. He loves us so much that, number one, he saves us, but number two, he doesn't leave us down there. Mm -hmm. Just like you say, if we trust him, he will lift us to the highest, greatest level. Mm -hmm. And that is uh, a huge, huge promise. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, Terry, can you read for us Ezekiel um, 6, 8, please? Sure. It's or 16, goes 8, sorry. 16, 8. Um, it goes along the same way. Now when I passed by thee and looked upon thee, behold, thy time was a time of love. And I spread my skirt over thee and covered thy nakedness. Yet I swear unto thee and entered into a covenant with thee, saith the Lord God, and thou becamest mine. Sounds like mm. if you're naked, you have not much going for you, does mm. it? That is correct. That is correct. You know, it was, um, they, if, if you're naked, you're lacking something. You're, <laughs> you know, th we're not mm. talking about physical nakedness. We're talking about spiritual yes. nakedness here. Mm. And that, you're lacking and, and in need of help. And he covers us. He with loves his love. us with yes. his mm -hmm. love. That is correct. Uh, this is such a beautiful verse. And, you know, he says that he spreads his skirt over thee. And it just, it reminds me of like a, like a wedding ceremony and something just so beautiful that this skirt of love and care and protection and embrace and all of that, that he's cloaking you yes. in such a loving, beautiful way. <clears throat> and, and he says, just be mine, yeah. and I will take care of your every need. He's <clears throat> covering our nakedness, our, our uh, faults, and our problems. He's covering us with this, his beautiful robe um, and, and giving us uh, a new life, so to speak. 
It says in A Great Controversy, uh, page 381, in the Bible, the sacred and enduring character of the relation that exists between Christ and his church is represented by the <coughs> union of marriage, which kind of comes with that mm. a little bit. Mm -hmm. so true. The Lord has joined his people to himself by his solemn covenant. He promised to be their God, and they pledging themselves to be his and his alone. Mm. Amen. It's, it just Amen. follows all together, I think. Mm -hmm. For sure. For sure. Yeah. You know, um, when, when we get this um, covering and we become the Lord's, it would be easy to be proud um, <laughs> if the Lord had chosen us above all other people i mean you know it's like wow i'm really something he chose me especially if you had nothing to start with that is correct yeah, yeah yeah it's it's kind of like well you won the lottery here but um <laughs> it's it's not that it's he loved us so much in our um poor state that he wants to change us he wants to give us his spirit his love and yes. uh that's you know uh spiritual pride is is relevant today just just as it was back then um but if we remember what jesus did for us there's no room for that and he didn't choose them because they had anything to offer exactly they weren't equipped they didn't have a clue uh, he chose them and he equipped them. He was Amen. the one that made the provision of, of any accomplishments that they may have been able to achieve. It was all his doing. And so if we get that out of balance and start thinking, oh, well, I'm able to do this because of my <laughs> talent or exactly. me, then we're getting our eyes off of Christ. Very true. Well, it goes to the time when they, they were building the tabernacle and God said he chose certain people and gave them special talents so they could make all these things. They didn't have them before, mm -hmm. but he didn't take them away when the tabernacle was finished. Correct. That remained with them, mm -hmm. and it was inherited by their children, which they used wrongly in the end. But mm -hmm. <laughs> right. But it just shows his blessing for, from nothing to they were very skilled. Mm -hmm. Yes, so true, so true. And, you know, also, he didn't only choose them. He wanted to give them a land, this promised land of flowing with milk and honey. And, and um, maybe we could read uh, a little bit in here uh, in Genesis. Um, if we go to Genesis, Lorinda, could you go to Genesis 12, 1, please? Um, and go ahead and... and uh, help us let's let's go into this promised land a little bit yes okay so uh genesis 12 1 and this is in the niv that i'm reading out of the lord had said to abram go from your country your people and your father's household to the land that i will show you so he's leaving his family he's leaving all that he knows and he's trusting the Lord. That's, that's pretty incredible. He would have to know that this was actually a promise from God. Otherwise, wow, that would be pretty crazy. Um, then I'm going to go ahead and read um, Genesis 13, um, 14 through 17. Yahweh said to Abram, after Lot was separated from him, now lift up your eyes and look from the place where you are, you are, northward, southward, eastward, and westward. For I will give all the land which you see to you and to your offspring forever. I will make your offspring as the dust of the earth, so that if a man can count the dust of the earth, then your offspring may also be counted. Arise and walk through the land and its length and its width, for I will give it to you. And Terry 15, uh, Genesis 15, 13 through 16, please. And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, 
and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge, and afterward shall they come out with great substance, which they did leaving Egypt, didn't they? <laughs> a lot they of did. things. Absolutely. And thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace, thou shalt be buried in a good old age. But in the fourth generation they shall come hither again, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet filled. So what is that, 316? Okay. Please, yes. So that was 316. Okay. And Lorinda, uh, Genesis 28, 13, please. There above it stood the Lord, and he said, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham, and the God of Isaac. I will give you and your descendants the land on which you were lying. And I just have to point out, this is like the second or third time we've heard the word give, yes. <laughs> which I think is an important <laughs> word to remember. That I will give you yes. the land. Very true. So with all those givings and, and gifts he's giving to them, he still said it was going to be 400 years, which is way past his la lifetime. Correct. Mm -hmm. so you have to really trust in okay. someone and believe in him mm -hmm. to accept that. Correct. And, you know, that's one thing where, um, and we've, you know, talked about this in the past as well, but um, waiting on the Lord and trusting him completely, no matter what we think or what we see, is a huge component of all of this and you know they they didn't get it back then and unfortunately we as humans <laughs> sometimes don't get it real well um, today either um, okay. and so that that waiting on the Lord um, I'm gonna go ahead and read Genesis uh, 50 24 Joseph said to his brothers I am dying but God will surely visit you and bring you up out of this land to the land which he swore to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So again, um, there's um, more of that promise that God is going to give them this land. Um, it's a lot of trust, isn't it? It is. <laughs> you can't see anything happening. Yes. And, and how do you get that kind of trust? Do you, is it a blind trust, or maybe he had that day-to-day -day walk in relationship with God? Absolutely. You know, he obviously had that day-to-day -day abiding relationship that makes the difference and makes us, um, not us, but able to have him live through us and, and to trust because... Um, to wait 400 years, um, that's, I mean, we, you know, we're lucky if we live 100 years um, mm -hmm. this day and age, mm -hmm. um, and that's four lifetimes of, you know, people today, um, and if, if you were given a promise that, uh, f you know, four lifetimes from now, mm -hmm. that is... Um, pretty incredible faith to follow that and to um, trust that that is going to happen. Mm -hmm. And the only way that that can happen is that abiding daily um, living within us. Yes. I think, I think some people are born with more faith, but it's, we're also told that we can ask for faith to be given to us. Yes. It's a free gift mm -hmm. from God. And every time that you trust, it builds your faith. Mm -hmm. A yes. problem comes up and you trust his promises that's building faith in yourself and people that observe you, I think, too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. yeah, it's it's not something that um, can be, uh, you know, give me patience now type of thing. <laughs> it's it's a building um, type of thing. Right. Promise. And like you say, some people may just have a better ability to to have faith and trust others might need Question a little everything. bit more cultivating, right? <laughs> and we trust God in the little things, like I'm gonna trust God, he's leading me to trust him in this, so I'm gonna choose today to trust God in this today, and then when you see God faithful and true, doesn't always happen right away, right. might not be 400 years, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> might even be a couple years, but when we trust in that thing, then, then not only is he gonna give us more to trust him with, but then we're gonna trust him more and more 
as time goes on, yes. <laughs> as we as we learn that oh, you know, I can trust in Him, and His ways are far better than mine. And you know, we we unfortunately as humans don't learn the best under easy circumstances. It seems, <laughs> at least, <laughs> I'm I'm kind of you know I. I unfortunately learn more under pressure and and duress, so to speak, than yeah. than I do in the ease of, uh, you know, um, nothing going wrong. And so, um, I guess, you know, the Lord uh, uh, said that uh, you know all things work together for good who them to them who love the Lord, and we have to trust that. We have to trust that. Mm -hmm. We generally try to work things out ourselves. And when it gets to, oh, there's nothing more to do. Oh, I better pray. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. Regretfully, yeah. we should have done that first. But Yes. And, and that prayer and, and communion with Christ is so critical because we see, you know, uh, things that go have gone wrong. You know, we can look all different places in the Bible and see where people took things into their own hands. And it really didn't go so well. Mm -hmm. um, and we're struggling with a lot of that today in the Middle East and, and other places because of um, the lack of trust um, at the time and, and the lessons that were unfortunately learned in that. Yes, yeah. When we aren't fully committed and all in to trusting in God's promises and we try to make his promises happen for him. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. There's, there's yeah. plenty of examples that where, work out too well. where that uh, didn't work out too well, for sure. Um, but yet we as humans uh, today think that we're a little different than that. And oh, if I help a little bit here, it's, it's gonna work better. And, and unfortunately, it, it never does. No. <laughs> um, so, you know, the Lord promised uh, that they would be a chosen people. He promised this land. When did he want them to possess it? You know, after this 400 years of captivity and he, he led them out of that and he led them across the, the sea, opened the sea up and drowned the army behind them and all of these awesome things. When did he want that to happen? Um, Terry, could you read for us Numbers uh, 13, uh, 1 through 2, please? And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Send thou men, that they may search the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel. Of every tribe of their fathers shall ye send a man, every one a ruler among them. So it sounds like he wanted to give it to them right away. It sounds like it. Yes. Yeah. Um, Lorinda, so um, were they uh, initially willing? So they sent out these spies. Lorinda, could you read uh, Numbers 14, 1 to 2, please? And all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night. <laughs> and all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron, and against Aaron. And the whole congregation said to them, Would God that we had died in the land of Egypt, or would God, we had died in this wilderness? <laughs> um, doesn't sound like they were too, too happy with uh, what, um, what report was b brought back. Um, numbers 13, 31 um, through 33, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, uh, read that as well. But the men who went up with him said, we aren't able to go against the people for they are stronger than we. They brought up an evil report of the land which they had spied out to the children of Israel saying, the land through which we have gone to spy out is a land that eats up its inhabitants and all the people who we saw are men of great stature. There we saw Nephilim, the sons of Anak who come from the Nephilim, we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and they were in their sight. So it doesn't sound, it sounds like the Lord, you know, we read that the, in, in uh, 13, 1 and 2 that the Lord wanted to give it to them right mm -hmm. away, um, but 
they aren't so um, interested in this after they see what uh, happened. What's going on here? Well, they immediately went to fear. So mm -hmm. all their faith and trust, that Correct. went out the window. Yeah. And they gave in to the fear. They saw this big monster in front of them and they forgot to look to God. All they could see was the hurdle, the problem. Yeah. And, and the other thing is, is that the people they sent were their lead, some of their leaders, the main leaders of their tribe. So mm -hmm. why would you distrust what they're saying if you've been following their advice all along? Right. Very true. Very true. You know, yeah. um, but the Lord had given them this promise and he had done these other things, but they got weak in the knees. They did. They, they, they started to listen to man and what he said about these huge giants and and it scared them yeah. and you know i can i can relate <laughs> you know there's there's times when you look and you're like oh my how am i gonna am you I know gonna do deal this? with this what am i gonna do but the lord had given them everything um, well there were two two spies that actually said it was a good deal very Trust true. god yes that uh, it wasn't enough for them for some reason Yes. After water from well, a rock and your food well, every day. They, <laughs> yeah, after they saw the water parting and everything yeah. that they had uh, all had witnessed God do that seemed impossible, but he did it anyway, they they completely forgot that fast. Yes. And and unfortunately, we are we are prone to that as well, um, you know, and they're w going with the majority isn't necessarily the best because 10 of these guys were wrong mm -hmm. yeah. they they were showing they weren't lying they were telling the truth mm -hmm. but they weren't trusting either and you know that kind of shows us that just because it's true doesn't mean that that's the way that we should go um, because the, they were telling it as they saw it. But and just because the majority says something correct. doesn't yes. make it right. The Bible says narrow is the path. <laughs> Very true. Right, in, in Matthew 7, narrow gate, so and that's where we're supposed to be. That it is isn't correct. the choice of, of the many, always. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. Yeah. So what lesson can we learn from this story today? You know, we've been talking about it a little bit about them, but how do we bring that in today? today, today? Um, what, what does that um, help us to see? Um, you know, Lorinda, you mentioned it. The majority isn't necessarily always uh, the best. That's, that's certainly something that we can take away from that. Yes, I, we, can, we can trust God's word when he tells us that that path is narrow and when he tells us it's it's going to be the minority that follows god and the truth we can trust in in his words with that that we don't want to necessarily listen to the the majority of folks when it comes to um our, our walk with with god and and our faith in him and i could speak from experience with this i've been through many situations in my life where i'm like Lord, you know, I can't see how you're going to work this out. I so can't true. see it. And then, um, you know, my mentor had taught me years ago, just say these words. God, I don't know how you're going to work this out, but I can't wait to see how you're going to work this out. I <laughs> so have no true. idea, but I can't wait to see it. Yeah. And that put a whole new perspective. So You're praising him before you get an answer. We, right. We praise yes. him, Amen. and we look at it as an opportunity to see God work something really cool that we would have never, ever imagined in our mind to Correct. work a situation out. And it didn't seem like um, it mentioned anywhere that they went to God. It said they cried all night, but right. it doesn't say they cried to God no. for an answer Correct. to their situation. They made the decision on their own. Correct. Very good point. And, you know, this was a promise. This was a mm -hmm. gift. Do we have to work for a gift? You know, it, it, you're both mothers. Um, if if your um, child gives you a gift, did you work for that? 
Well, that, as a mom, yes. <laughs> well, <laughs> well <laughs> true, true. I, I wouldn't argue with that. Mothers work extremely hard, but if, if they're yeah. just giving you a gift out of the love of their right. heart, they they can never pay you back for all that you have done for them. You know, there's no way we as kids can pay um, our parents back or anybody back for what they have done. They have given a lifetime, but that's a gift. And, and if, if somebody gives us a gift, we as humans, we tend to like to work for things or, you know, at least justify a little bit of, of what this is. But, um, you know, I, I think of the, um, the servant that, you know, he, or the, the person who owed these, what was it, 10,000 mm -hmm. um, talents of silver or gold, or whatever it was, that was in today's dollar, dollars, billions and billions mm. of dollars. There's no way that he could pay for it. But he said, forgive me and I'll, I'll pay it back. Well, that just made, that, that tells us that he didn't really realize how much he owed. <laughs> you know, he had no idea. But it was a gift given to him mm -hmm. that there's no way he could pay for. And I guess that's kind of what, what this is here. The Lord was going to, we read that he was going to give them the land. He wasn't requiring them to even fight. He was going to give that to them. And I think um, we need to um, realize that today as well, is that he wants to give us his love, his peace, his joy in the midst of all the craziness going on, no matter what um, we see as totally insurmountable, whether it's, you know, our health or our finances or whatever it is, he can take care of us and, and he wants to give us that gift. Yes. So <clears throat> the covenant now, um, he, he said that he would um, covenant uh, he, he made a covenant. He loved them, and then he was also fulfilling this covenant. Um, uh, what word of counsel and warning did Moses give to the children of Israel before his death in regard to this? Terry, could you, could you read for us, uh, please, Deuteronomy 28, um, 1 and 15, I believe. Deuteronomy 28, 1 and 15, And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments which I commanded thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth. What a great promise, isn't it? So true. And then verse 15, and it, But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. And there's a list of curses that would follow. Yeah, and if we read in Jeremiah 11, um, 3 as well, um, and say to them, Yahweh, the God of Israel, says, cursed is the man who doesn't hear the words of this covenant. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, there, there was a blessing, but they also had to follow him. They had to trust him. They had to, um, you know. Keep his commandments. Keep his commandments. Yes. Correct. Yeah. And, and the only way to keep his commandments is, is to, you know, have him living in their hearts. Yeah. And when he was talking about draping the skirt over them, you know, he goes on and on. It's such beautiful text about how he wants to spoil them and just shower them with gifts and blessings and love. And he, he just wanted to love them because he chose to love them. And all they had to do was accept the gift. I know a lot of times when people give me a gift, I'm hesitant, like, really? You want to give me that? Why? And... <laughs> 
but, and we're, I think, hesitant sometimes to take these gifts. Like you say, we want to work for things. And God's like, you don't have to work for this. Just accept it and o o live a life of obedience to me it, because you're going to break that, that um, what would you want to call that? It's like when you're abiding in him, he's able to shower you with all of these blessings, but if you turn away from him, you shut that door of blessings, Correct. and he can't protect you any longer from these curses because you have chosen a different way yeah. altogether. It's, you know, it's just like um, the, the Ten Commandments or the Ten Promises. You know, if you don't have any other gods before you, you're going to be happier and if you don't kill people and and all of these these promises mm -hmm. it's this is all part of this here to where he can if we will keep his promises it's going to be the best thing for us but yet we tend to say oh no nah, we've we've got this we're gonna we're gonna go off in, in our own way and, right. and think it's going to turn out good right and when things start going well for them that's where that self-pride comes in. They yes. forget, wait, my power comes from the Lord, not from myself. But they got a little bit more about thinking that the power came from themselves right. and turned away from God. And he warned them, all these horrible things are going to happen if you turn away. <laughs> yes, so true. Yeah. So true. <clears throat> so obeying God and abiding with him was... A warning that Moses gave to the children mm -hmm. of Israel obey and obey trust and obey right <laughs> trust and obey for there's no other way yep yes so true so true all right so um, then we go on to the remnant and I would like to spend a little time on the remnant here um, can we think of any um, remnants in the Bible of people that were um, faithful against all odds, um, you know, that w stood up to the majority, so to speak, and um, were blessed for that and had God's blessing. Can we think of any of those? Well, go start with the Joshua and Caleb. They were a, a remnant. Everyone else died in the desert because of their, mm. their request to. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we, we go back to, and, and Joshua was one of those that went and, and looked at this land, and he was one of those that came back and says, ah, no, the, we can take this land. The Lord will give it to us. Mm. But they didn't trust him. But yet, like you say, absolutely, he was... Uh, one in a million, so to speak, that um, was was against the um, the majority. The first person I think of as a remnant is Noah. Definitely. Terry and Very I were true. talking about that. Noah was definitely a remnant. <laughs> yes, yes. And, you know, Noah uh, had to work. He had to build the ark. He you know, all he preached for 120 years, and you know, we were talking about the 400 years before, but even 120 years is a long time to wait mm, for yeah. a for a promise. Um, and yet, he was faithful through through that, and um, his family, yeah, were the only remnant out of the entire population yeah. of the world. Yeah. And, you know, we don't know how many people there were, but there was definitely, um, you know, quite a few. Um, and the, the thing that I would say about that and the promise that I see in, in the story of Noah as well is that um, all the people had to do to be saved was to walk onto that ark. Mm -hmm. They didn't, even if they didn't, help build it even if they didn't preach even all they had to do was to trust and to walk onto that ark and that is similar well, the same today we have to just trust god with our lives and we need to um you know do that as well 
Um, you know, there's, there's several others. Um, Elijah, <laughs> you know, he, he was uh, on a remnant. The three worthies is, is another one that I love because, you know, I don't know where Daniel was at that point, but obviously he didn't bow either, but right. he was, he was somewhere else. We don't, we aren't told really where, where that was, but, um, all of these people, um, on this plane and only three didn't bow down. Well, I'm going back to Elijah. He thought he was the only one left. He didn't know of yes. any other uh, Christians that were standing up. He was all alone doing what God told him to do, and he was worn out. <laughs> and That's God said, true. I have many yes. left. Yes, and you're absolutely correct. He thought that he was the only. And, you know, let's uh, talk about Joseph a little oh, bit. Yeah. Um, you know, he... Um, Obviously, his brothers were um, not the nicest um, to uh, sell him into slavery. And, and, uh, First, they, he probably thought he was going to die. That's exactly threw right. Threw him in the pit. Yeah, you know. yeah, yeah, they threw him in the pit. And his father, for many, 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 many years, can you imagine his father, you know, when they come home with this bloody coat, you know? <laughs> that, Sad. That, that wrenching. Yeah. And his mom died right. thinking that her son had perished. That is correct. Correct. She will not know until heaven the whole story. Right. You know? It's true. Um, and you know, there's somebody else that I think of yeah. as a remnant is in the lepers, where there was the one intent that turned yes. back to Christ to say, thank you for healing me. So true. So Was true. that the majority? It was just the one that just turned the back. One. Yeah. Yeah. So true. And of course, Daniel, um, you know, um, he uh, he stood up against pretty crazy odds as well, you know, um, <laughs> it, to to be thrown in the, the hungry lion's den. That's uh, that's no small trial. Um, and yet the Lord saved him through that. And usually you didn't go on when a, a, another kingdom took over. You were generally eliminated, sometimes killed. And he yes. went through what? three kingdoms or was it more than that yeah and, and he was honored for mm -hmm. standing up so true so true yeah. yes yes um you know i wanted to bring this into today a little bit as well and um this is a quote from ellen white that says i was shown many things concerning the people of god in connection with his work for these last days I saw that many professed Sabbath keepers will come short of everlasting life. They fail to take warnings from the course pursued by the children of Israel and fall into, saying, into some of their evil ways. If they continue in these sins, they will fall like the Israelites and never enter the heavenly Canaan. Now all these things happened unto them for examples that they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. You know, um, that just tells me that, um, you know, that was a remnant there. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, there's, there's many examples, and we talked about a few, but there's a lot more in the Bible as well. But what are we as a remnant people, the last um, people um, on earth, so to speak, before the Lord comes, are we truly having him in our hearts and letting him lead us and guide us? Yeah. Is there any other um, thing that we can bring this into today that we can help this to um, uh, sink home that we can take uh, something and say, wow, I want to um, have the Lord in my life, change my life, um, so that we aren't like uh, the uh, Israelites, so to speak. Well, if you think about it, the promise to the Israelites was what? Abide in me, allow me to abide with you, and I will lead you to the promised land. We have that same promise 
but even better. So true. Abide with me, let me abide with you, and I will lead you to the kingdom eternal to abide with me for all of eternity. Yes. So our reward is, is even better than a land on earth. Our reward, Amen. if we abide in him, obey his commandments, and, and out of love, so we abide out of love, and he definitely loves us and abides with us. And if we are, maintain that relationship with him, uh, he will be happy to not have us fight for the kingdom. We don't have to be fighting. Correct. He will yes. give it to us. So true. So true. So, and, and that, you know, uh, that kingdom was just a foreshadowing of like you're talking about yeah. heaven. You know, the, the true and and uh you know end all so to speak right where uh there's a perfect life not just milk and honey on this earth but a a perfect no more pain no more sorrow um life forever right. and going back to um israel itself when they were out in the in the desert god gave them many blessings and he wanted to um because they were so small and had so little he, he was making them like a light on a hill so that mm -hmm. they could uh, be a blessing to all the people around them and show God's grace and hopefully bring them into the family. And that's what we're supposed to do now is be that light to other people, I think, and um, proclaim God's blessings so that we can, we can be the light to all the people in the yeah, country. That's and, right. and that's how it can apply to us today. Yeah, yes. for sure. And, you know, the Apostle John um, in Revelation, Lorinda, could you read for us Revelation uh, 12, 17? And uh, uh, he, he tells us some things in there about uh, the, the faithful remnant in the last days. Yes, and there's a couple mm -hmm. of verses that, that mm -hmm. talk about this, but this is just one of them, uh, Revelation 12, 17. Then the dragon was enraged at the woman and went off to wage war against the rest of her offspring, those who keep God's commands and hold fast their testimony about Jesus. Yes, so true. So um, we have to believe and accept because of, of Christ, um, and the dragon doesn't want us to do that. That's the last thing that he uh, wants us to um, be part of. He wants us to, um, you know, get off in the in the weeds, so to speak, with the with the masses, and and not be connected um, yeah. for sure. Well, he's enraged because he has done all of this deception and lies and he's been working all these years trying to um trying to convince us that we can we don't we sh we have no reason to trust god that god is a liar right. and he's just enraged because he can't get to this remnant this remnant is so tight with god he is Amen. our man and Satan is enraged because he can't break that crust. Yeah, so um, there's a quote here that nothing disturbs Satan so much as our not being ignorant of his devices. If we feel our danger, we shall feel the need of prayer, as did Nehemiah. And like him, we shall obtain that sure defense that will give us security in peril. If we are careless and indifferent, we will surely be overcome by Satan's devices. We must be vigilant. And, and that's the, what he doesn't want us to be. That's why he puts mm -hmm. out all of these distractions. And sometimes the things aren't really wrong, but they're a distraction. So true. He uses our time when we should be using it for other things. Yes. I have a hard time there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He doesn't care how he gets us. No. no. Any way works. <laughs> that is correct. That is correct. Yes, so true. So true. Um, so the covenant promised to spiritual Israel. Um, could we read Galatians? Um, 
actually, um, do you have that, Terry? Or, I do. Okay, Galatians 3, 6 through 9. Even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness, know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. So we're all children of, of Abraham. Mm -hmm. How far? And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. Yeah. And, you know, Abraham was a Gentile as well for the first, what, 75 years or something like that? Um, and so um, that's, that's what we, what should give us hope as well is that it doesn't matter our background. It doesn't matter our past. He, we can give it to Christ and, and he can. Because God called him out so he could. Correct. So he, it sounds like he's preaching to him. That God yes. is preaching to Abraham. Yes. So, and then it's in the future, wherever Abraham went, it says he built altars. So even the people of Canaan yes. would see those and say, oh, th that was Abraham's, and he had blessings, and they would build it up again and make offerings on it. So he was witnessing, even when he was gone from in his travels. That is <laughs> correct. And what did it do? What, what changed Abraham? It was... It was not just some, you know, law that he kept or something. It was that relationship. relationship. Mm -hmm. That relationship changed his heart that, that brought him to uh, a realization of his need for um, the Lord. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, how can we remain faithful? What, what, what can we do um, to be able to remain faithful um, to today? Keep our eyes on Jesus. Study the word that he's given to us. Um, mm -hmm. It's so easy to be distracted and not have time to so really study and spend time alone with God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, I, I think of that three-legged stool. I love that, you know, illustration where um, if any one of those legs is, is not there, it will topple. And it's, it's prayer, Bible study. And then go tell somebody what you learned, what Christ did for you today, how he changed you and, and helped you through um, yesterday or whatever it is and and those those three things we cannot forget that has to be a constant every day prayer Bible study and then share it with somebody well isn't that the truth I mean when when we're spending time sorry I'm fiddling with this it's <laughs> hurting my ear um, when we're spending time with God he's equipping us not only to to be able to walk with him day to day, but he's also equipping us for what are we supposed to do? The Great Commission, share, share. the gospel Amen. around the earth. So he is going to equip us, even if we don't feel qualified to share his word or yes. to minister to anyone, uh, he will equip us. He'll bring people into our life. And yes. and uh, that that's his his goal to save as many people as possible and it's it's a the relationship where he does his part we do our part and it it's not a one-sided relationship it's we're all doing our part in this relationship with him and and submitting ourselves to him humbling ourselves before god not letting that pride seep in. <laughs> I know you have a problem with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, we all, we all end up in that, well, I have, you know, this and this, because, and it's not anything to do with that. If we are daily seeking him on our knees and in the word, he will give us 
uh, a love and, and a um, peace that people will then see and they'll then we can share that with others because you know if 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 we feel that we've made it well we haven't spent enough time at his feet mm -hmm. because if we look at what the creator of this universe he made this whole world he made all of this stuff he humbled himself came to this earth and died for you and me he loved us so much that it didn't matter what we had done he wanted to save us now we can say no but he has given us that chance no matter what and i am just so thankful for that every single day the when you look at what he has done it just humbles you to realize how wretched i am um as as a person because of i'm i'm not like that i am not like that but yet he can change me to where he can be seen through me and that's what i want and that's um what is going to change the world and and make the world um see his love finally um in in these last days because we live in some pretty crazy times and um there's a lot of really bad things that go on mm -hmm. um but yet he loves us so much he wants us to we, go home with him we become oh uh, what we're around like what we're around so true so if we spend and dan going back to daniel he openly he probably did it privately too but openly prayed three times a day for everyone to see yes and um he had a really close relationship with god and and jesus it says would sometimes spend all night in prayer yes. talking with mm -hmm. his father giving strength for the next day so how much more do we need it yeah because and and he was perfect he was a perfect individual that never sinned how much more we mm -hmm. as broken sinners need that every single day and way more than we do uh, at least way more than i do um anyway you guys <laughs> may, may do a better job th of that than i do but uh thank you so much for um being willing to uh spend uh this last hour um going over this lesson and and hopefully um we learned something and and are drawing closer to christ because of it um it's time to close and let's just uh, go ahead and close with a word of prayer father we do realize that we are naked and and need your robe to cover us and we just thank you that you have given us that and we ask that each one of us would spend the time to learn of you draw closer to you and to have you in our hearts every day all day go with us on your beautiful sabbath day we um, ask that you would uh, lead and guide in the rest of this service we thank you and love you amen amen, amen.